guys i hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world my name is boom shaka and i welcome you to my channel as always i'm so grateful that you guys are listening subscribing commenting i really appreciate the support and of course if you guys want to support me further you can do that by going to my patreon link the link is in the description below you can give me a dollar a month five dollars a month whatever you prefer in this video, I want to speak to you guys about something that Christina Lin mentioned in one of her comments. And I thought it was so, so interesting because this is exactly why I left my corporate life. And so I wanted to share the comment with you and then speak a little bit more about it. It's about corporate culture in general. And this is what she says. One of the things I hate about work, I work in a corporate environment, is that you're judged by, for example, how much you speak up in meetings. If I don't have anything specific to say, I'd rather remain quiet, but then people will literally call you out like, Christina, do you have anything to add? And I'm thinking, no, if I did, I would have said it. But because I know how I'm being judged, I have to frantically think of something to say. It's highly uncomfortable and it's so fake, I can't stand it. By the end of the workday, I'm exhausted. Now, I love the vulnerability and the power that is in these words that, she, that Christina has shared with us because you can really feel the emotion and really feel the frustration in her words because all of us have been there probably, I think. If you've worked in a corporate environment and if you're an INFJ or an introvert in general, I think, it's an extremely difficult environment to be in. Now, I've done videos on this in the past where I've, says, where I've said that INFJs don't like to say something unless it's extremely important. We kind of follow the adage of stay silent until you have something important to say, right? If you have nothing important to say, just don't say anything. You're not here to just talk nonsensical things. You're here to contribute in a proper manner, in a good manner, in a positive manner, in an enlightening manner, right? And so a lot of times we will be sitting there and people are talking and this happens to me a lot and not only in the corporate culture, which it happens to me, which it happened to me a lot in the past, but even now, I'll be sitting around in, at a dinner table with a bunch of different people, perhaps some strangers, some friends. And then always, this happens to me every single time, I'll be sitting there happily munching on my food or you know, drinking my water bottle, drinking my water, and someone, and just listening to the conversation around me. Some people are talking here, some people are talking there, some people are talking there, and I'm just sitting and, and listening and taking it in. It's just happy in my little shell, right? And then suddenly someone will look up at me and say, oh, so you're very quiet. What do you have to say about all of this? And I'll think to myself, why? Now, why did you have to ruin my bubble that I was in? But not only that, why did you have to do that? Why do you have to point me out and say, what do you have to say about this? If I had something to say, as Christina said, I would have said it. You know, if we are really passionate about something, you know me, I, I can talk. So if I had something to say, I would have said it already, you dumbass but anyways and mostly it's men for some reason i don't know what it is about men sometimes i don't know i don't understand why but they always point me out and i was like you're very quiet you have some don't you have something to say about this i'm like no i don't <laughs> it makes me so angry but to go back to our corporate culture this happened to me a lot and this is something that we, we as an introverts have to really fight against all the time because what happens is that even though we might be qualified more qualified than anyone else. Even though we know our stuff, we know our shit, and we know our work really well, and we're really good at it, even so, if we don't speak up in meetings, if we don't speak up when our boss is around and you know people are around, if we stay silent, then no one's gonna recognize the fact that we're good enough, and people other than us are gonna get promoted and are gonna get recognized because they talk. They just might talk nonsense, they might talk about things that are not useful at all, or they might say things that are completely wrong, but they're talking. And because they're talking, people are paying attention to them. And because people are paying attention to them, when it comes time to getting a promotion or getting a new a role or responsibility or doing something cool, they're the ones who first come to mind because we were quiet and we were, we were in the corner and no one really heard us and we weren't, we weren't paid attention to. We don't, some people don't even know we exist sometimes, right? And that's the unfortunate thing about, I think, one of the unfortunate things about the corporate culture is that that's one of the reasons I left because I hated that pressure. I hated that impetus, all of all is the impetus on me to be fake and to pretend like an, I'm an extrovert and to say things even though I did not need to say it or to just comment on things even though I had nothing to contribute or I didn't feel like I had anything to contribute. And it was just so annoying to me 
And like Christina said, at the end of the, the workday, even though it's only eight hours, I would feel so exhausted as if I'd just run a marathon and then not slept all night and had nothing to eat all day. You know, it was just so exhausting. I'd go back home and I would need hours and hours and hours to recuperate from it. And every single morning I'd get up and think to myself, I have to do this again. I have to go and pretend to be an extrovert again. I have to go and pretend to have contributions or talk about things that I don't really care about. And I have to talk to people that I really don't care about. It just seemed like such a waste of my time. And I'm thankful now that I don't have to do it. Oh my God, I'm so thankful. But I know that a lot of you guys as introverts are in these corporate cultures. And I wish that I had some positive tidbit to give to you guys. But basically what I did for the longest time was faked it. And that's what it is. It's about, it's just about freaking faking it. As Christina said, it's tiresome and it's exhausting and it is just so fake, but that's what we have to do. We're surrounded by extroverts. 75% of the population is extroverted. And if you're in a corporate world, probably more so than that. You know, I think most of the people I was surrounded by were extroverts. There were a couple of introverts, but mostly they were extroverts. Now, thankfully, some jobs and some bosses understand that there is this thing called introversion and they do understand that I might be capable, but I might not talk about it. And so there are bosses like that. And I was lucky that a couple of times I had a female boss that was really intuitive and understood that I was an introvert. They don't really need to speak about my things. I just want to do my job. I just want to be left alone and do my job. And so she understood that. Right. And so that was great. But unless your boss is actually intuitive in that manner and understands the situation, most people won't care about this, right? Most people will not care about the fact that you're an introvert. They just want you to speak up. They want you to be loud. They want you to be exuberant and extroverted and share your opinions and just be loud in general and just just draw attention to yourself. Because if you don't, then you're the one who's going to be left out, out of promotions, out of opportunities, out of responsibilities, things like that. And this happened to me a lot because even though I had the qualifications for a lot of these things, other people would get the roles or responsibilities or the promotions because they spoke up more. They were fine with speaking up. They were all extra words. I wasn't. You know, and it took me a long time to get to the point where I was, all right, fine, I'm going to pretend to be an extra word and I'm going to speak up about things even if I don't want to. So it took me a while to get to that point. But even then I hated it. And I still hate it. And this is the reason I'm not working in a corporate culture anymore. I work for myself. I do my own thing because I don't want to deal with that shitty net, like just shittiness in general. It just felt like every single day of my life, I was being den- I was being denigrated for being who I am. Every single day of my life, I was being told that I'm not good enough as I am. I'm not good enough as I am as an introvert. I'm not good enough as a person who likes to keep quiet unless she has import- important things to say, right? And so obviously not only that, but also I had social anxiety, a lot of it in the past. So that didn't help because I always felt like even if I spoke up, I was speaking nonsense and I felt like people were looking at me like I was crazy, right? So of course that didn't help either. And a lot of you guys are probably in the same boat where you are not only introverts, but you're also socially anxious. And so those two things just kill us. They absolutely freaking kill us. Now, of course, my solution was to run away from the corporate culture and run far, far, far away as fast as I could and do my own thing. So I, I, I now I run my own thing you know, I do my own business kind of thing. But for you guys, perhaps it's not a possibility or maybe it's not something that you're interested in. So again, it is the only possibility that you have to fake it or find a culture or corporate culture where your boss understands that you're an introvert and allows for it, allows for you to be an introvert and allows for your introversion as a good part of you and does not denigrate you for it or, or make you feel bad for it, okay? So that's, again, of course, one of the options. And there are cultures like that out there. So I'm not saying that all, all corporate cultures are toxic to introverts, but it's very common that corporate cultures are very toxic and denigrating towards an introvert. They want us to pretend to be an extrovert and we don't like doing that. And so then we are the ones who get the, the small end, end of the stick. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know what advice to give you guys. I am unfortunately, or fortunately I'm out of it, but I know a lot of you guys, that's why you choose entrepreneurship to be your own boss. And I think that's a great idea for an INFJ or an introvert in general. I think that's one of the best options for us because we do not do well in corporate culture. If you're going to be, as I said, in a corporate culture, find something that jibes with you and find a boss that understands you. Have a conversation with her. Tell her that you're an introvert. Tell her that you don't like speaking up in meetings like that, but you do have things to contribute. 
can you just email it to her? And that's what I used to do is like, I didn't really like talking in meetings, but afterwards I would like set, set up like a bunch of notes and I would like send her my thoughts on the things that we spoke about. So at least she knows that I'm thinking about it. At least she knows that I'm qualified. At least she knows that I'm not a complete fool, right? And so that's, again, one of the things you could do. Of course, I don't know how well that's going to work because only your boss is going to know about these things, not everyone else. And so that's also a problem in that regard. This is not very helpful, but hopefully it helped you because it helped you understand that you're not alone in this world. If you're an introvert and hating the corporate culture, there are all the other introverts are along with you. Okay, we all understand where you're coming from. Thank you, Christina, for sharing your vulnerable comment. I really appreciate it. Again, thank you guys for listening. If you guys want to support me further, you can do that at my Patreon site. The link is in the description below. And I shall see you guys the next time around. Bye for now.